Traditionally, KDE has focused on developing the Plasma desktop environment and applications relying on other distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora, and OpenSUSE to deliver their software to users. KDE Neon was the closest thing to an official KDE distribution, but it was essentially Ubuntu with the latest KDE software layered on the top. KDE Linux Alpha represents the first time KDE is attempting to control the entire software stack. Originally codenamed Project Banana, this distribution was announced at Academy and is now available for public testing. This alpha release features immutable operating system, Ars Linux Foundation, Atomic Updates, and instant rollback capabilities. But before we dive in, this is alpha software. Do not install it on your main machine or any system you depend on for your daily work. KD Linux is built as an immutable operating system. The base system files are read-only, which prevents accidental system corruption and allows atomic updates. If an update fails or causes issues, user can instantly roll back to the previous working state. The distribution uses Ars Linux as its foundation, providing access to cutting-edge software packages through its Ars repositories. However, this is not simply another Ars derivative. KDE has implemented their own mechanism and system management tools. Application delivery focuses heavily on flatpak packages while core KDE applications like Dolphin, Console, and System Settings are integrated into the base system. Most additional software is distributed through Flatpak for better sandboxing and update management. The technical stack includes modern components, VLAN display servers, BTRFS file system for snapshot functionality, and pipe wire for audio management. These technologies represent the current direction of Linux desktop development. The Discover Software Center serves as the primary interface for installing and managing applications with seamless Flatpak integration built-in. Upon the first boot, users are presented with a clean Plasma desktop environment. The default configuration showcases modern Plasma features including smooth animations, blur effects, and contemporary styling. Pre-install applications cover basic desktop needs, Dolphin File Manager, Console Terminal, Firefox Web Browser, and the Discover Software Center. The selection focuses on essential tools rather than comprehensive software suits. System performance appears responsive during basic uses, boot times are reasonable, and application launching feels snappy. The immutable architecture doesn't appear to impact day-to-day -day performance negatively. The Discover Software Center provides access to Flatpak applications with a clean, integrated interface. Software installation and removal work as expected, though some applications may require additional setup. As an alpha release, KDE Linux has several important limitations users need to understand. Secure boot is not currently supported, which may be problematic for systems requiring this security feature. The distribution supports only UEFI systems. Legacy BIOS installations are not possible. NVIDIA GPU support is limited, particularly for graphics card older than the Turing architecture. These systems may require additional configuration or may not work properly. Update sizes are currently very large because Delta updates are not fully implemented. Users should expect gigabyte size downloads even for minor system updates. Some Flatpak applications do not integrate seamlessly with the Plasma desktop, resulting in inconsistent theming or functionality gaps. The alpha status means bugs, missing features, and potential data loss are expected. This is strictly testing software. KDE Linux represents more than just another Linux distribution. This project positions KDE alongside other organizations developing immutable desktop operating systems including Fedora Silverblue, OpenSUSE Aeon, and Universal Blue. By controlling the entire software stack, KDE can potentially deliver updates faster and ensure better integration between desktop environment and underlying system. This could result in more polished user experiences and reduce compatibility issues. The immutable architecture aligns with current trends in operating system design, emphasizing stability, security, and easy recovery from system problems. For current KDE Neon users, this distribution may eventually serve as a direct replacement or evolution of their existing system. However, the timeline for the stable release remains unclear, and the project's long-term success depends upon KDE's ability to maintain an entire operating system alongside their desktop environment development. KDE Linux Alpha demonstrates interesting potential but is strictly for testing purposes. Users shouldn't install this on the production systems or machines containing their important data. 
The distribution shows Kiri's technical capability to develop a complete operating system and the immutable architecture provides a solid foundation for future development. Current limitations make this unsuitable for daily use. Alpha software status means users should expect bugs, incomplete features and possible system instability. The project represents an ambitious direction for KDE but patience will be required as development continues towards beta and eventual stable releases. Ok and that's all for today so I hope you found this video helpful and if so please like and share the video, subscribe the channel and turn on notifications for more Linux tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.